We finally found some of the best playmakers of the 2024 NFL Draft, and thankfully, they're right here in Mobile, Alabama. We got all that and a little bit of land yap for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? I am Ross Jackson, your native New Orleanian, New Orleans Saints expert and credential member of the media covering the New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode of Locked on Saints, we've isolated three positions of need for the Saints. And I'm going to go over at least three different candidates here in Mobile at the Senior Bowl that fit the mold for what the Saints need. We'll take a look at the athletic pass rushers that the Saints should absolutely be investing in regardless of the physical prototype. We're going to take a look at the offensive lineman that could come in and potentially save the New Orleans Saints 2024 season because no matter what they do at OC and with their offensive system, none of it happens without an offensive line that can stay together. And to kick us off, we're going to take a look at some of the playmakers of the 2024 NFL draft that the New Orleans Saints could potentially add after watching up close and personal here in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. As always, we appreciate you very much for being an everydayer and for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is sponsored by our friends over at LinkedIn. You can post your job for free today at LinkedIn Jobs. We want to help you find the qualified candidates that you are looking for faster and for free. So post your job today at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So we found the playmakers of the 2024 NFL draft. Okay. At least some of the playmakers of the 2024 NFL draft. One of the big things that I noticed going into this draft is that there aren't a ton of playmakers where the saints are inherently already selecting their guys at the very top of the draft. They're guys that are going to be later in the second, third, fourth rounds, but the saints have no selections in the third and fourth rounds and have an early second round pick. But now we're starting to see some more of those playmakers come to life. And some of them are putting on some really, really great performances here in mobile at the senior bowl, where the new Orleans saints have just about every coach in attendance uh, for this all-star game. So let's take a look at some of the playmakers that you should have on your list. When it comes to the new Orleans saints, I want to start off with somebody that actually mocked to the saints on Monday. Uh, We got some updated measurements around him, but don't let the couple of inches that came off of his height fool you. This guy is an absolute playmaker. It is uh, University of South Carolina wide receiver Xavier Leggett. I almost said receiver. Uh, So he originally uh, was listed at six foot three, 220 ish pounds. Uh, now, after measuring in here at the Senior Bowl, uh, six foot one, 223 pounds. He has a second round talent somewhere around there. 1,255 receiving yards in 2023, which included seven receiving touchdowns, 17.7 yards per reception. Leggett is something else. The kid is really good. He's really really good. And he is one of those receivers at six foot one, 225 that you could have as your ex receiver. He is a big body dude. that can go up and make contested catches, plays much bigger than his size. He was six foot three playing like he's six foot six. Now they made, they, they kind of measured him in. He was at six foot one. He's still playing like he's six foot six, except he's making the catches out there and he's doing it with style. This guy is absolutely awesome. And he's been a lot of fun to watch here in Mobile as well. Absolutely a wide receiver that should be on your list. I think the Saints should try to find one of those big bodied pass catchers and a guy like a Xavier Leggett, Leggett, a guy like a a Johnny Wilson. There's others in this draft class as well. But what we're seeing from Leggett here in Mobile has been uh, something that sort of confirms what we thought we knew about Xavier Leggett, even with the six foot one weigh in or measure in as opposed to six foot three. Don't let that fool you at all. This kid has been balling out here in Mobile and he would be a fantastic addition to a New Orleans or in a New Orleans Saints uniform. Um, Let's go to tight end next. Penn State tight end Theo Johnson, another guy that we talked about going into this year's draft class or going into this year's senior bowl. I put him on our first mock draft Monday. I think I had him in the fifth round or or late, yeah, late fifth round. He's probably moving up to probably be more like a third or fourth round guy, maybe end of day two, early day three. But like the Saints are going to end up with potentially five different fifth round picks or excuse me, four different fifth round picks and a couple of sixths. 
you can move you can mobilize and move up in fact i'm going to tell you about effectively 11 different players today every single one of them except for one falls within the first five rounds so if i'm the new orleans saints i'm trading i'm getting into the top four rounds as much as i can using whatever i've got to use to be able to get up there and theo johnson is one of the reasons why i would do that six foot six 257 pounds probably that third fourth round guy like we said uh, moves extremely well, very fluid, good route runner, dips, uses his leverage really well, can kind of change, you know, his change of direction is really awesome. He has been the only tight end here at the Senior Bowl so far, in my opinion, that has consistently made clean catches. Uh, we've seen a lot of drops from Ben Sinat. We've seen a lot of, you know, uh, just kind of like quick plays to Jaheim Bell and stuff like that. But really, six foot six, 257 pound pass catcher Theo Johnson is the tight end whose name you need to know outside of, of course, Georgia tight end, you know, the big dude coming out of uh, coming out of Georgia. But uh, the Saints aren't going to be at all in position to get him at 12 in the first round. Let's take a look at another guy, a guy that we haven't talked about here on the show before. It is Missouri running back Cody Schrader. This dude has been so much fun to watch here in Mobile. Weighed in here at the Senior Bowl at five foot eight, two hundred and seven pounds. So a little small, but he's another one of those guys that is extremely hard to tackle and absolutely has one of those, uh, you know, that that sort of play style that is. He's, he's just tough to bring down with the ball in his hands. 1,627 rushing yards in 2023. Yes, 1,600 rushing yards in 2023. Playing in the SEC, by the way, uh, Mizzou. Uh, 14 rushing touchdowns, 5.9 yards per rush. He was a lot of fun to watch here in Mobile as well. Uh, only caught just over 20 passes during his time at Missouri. Has not let any pass that has gone his way here in Mobile hit the ground. He's been awesome in that area. So it's always good to be able to see guys like kind of expand and show you a little bit more of what they can do uh, as a player. And Cody Schrader's done a really good job of showing you that. Um, had one rush to where they kind of handed it off to him. He was kind of working over to the left side uh, of the line. And as he was working over there, somebody collapsed from the outside. He's got this quick change of direction, kind of this little jump cut that gets him going. And then once he's got his feet under him and he's got his legs under him, very clean footwork, a lot of speed, good breakaway stuff. Uh, really, really fantastic player, and he's been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I'll give a quick honorable mention here as well. Tulane wide receiver Jaquan Jackson, uh, five foot nine, one ninety, so a little bit undersized, but he has been another one of those guys out here making plays over and over and over again. Not just when Michael Pratt's throwing to him either; he's working with these other quarterbacks. Uh, Matty Hudak, dear friend of mine, who of course is a Tulane side re sideline reporter, covered Jaquan Jackson. Very, very recently, you know, their season just came to an end a few months ago over at Tulane here in Mobile, spoke to him and then said that he seemed like he had aged like three years in the time that they had talked to each other. So, you know, just kind of uh, figuring out and learning a little bit more about who he is, um, you know, kind of settling in a little bit like professionalism, all these other deals. I mean, he's just got sort of like the intangibles and he's showing off the tangibles here in Mobile as well. So it's USC wide receiver, or rather, sorry, South Carolina uh, wide receiver, Xavier Leggett, Penn State tight end, Theo Johnson, Mizzou running back, uh, Cody Schrader, and then Tulane wide receiver, Jaquan Jackson gets a little honorable mention there as well. Jaquan Jackson, by the way, no relation. Uh, all right. So coming up next, we're going to take a look at the offensive line, obviously the New Orleans Saints looking at boosting their offense and are close or should be hiring an offensive coordinator within the next couple of weeks. But no matter what offense coordinator they're hire, what offense they bring to New Orleans, if they don't have the offensive line that can stay healthy and get it done, they won't go anywhere. So who are some of the guys here in Mobile that the Saints that should be on the Saints radar? We're going to be taking a look at all that as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs wants to help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and hire faster and for free. It's the new year and you know everybody's asking the same question when it comes to the small businesses. What's the one move that I can make in 2024 that will take my business to the next level? And LinkedIn knows that your success is all about the team that you surround yourself with. It wants to make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right folks. Look, LinkedIn knows that small business owners wear a lot of hats and so because of that, it's great to be able to take some of the responsibility off of people's plates. How about LinkedIn Jobs helping you write a job description for you, screening questions so you get an idea of you know, candidates having the requisite knowledge and information and experience that you're looking for before you add them to your team. LinkedIn Jobs is here to help you make sure that you're always making the right decision when it comes to your small business and hiring in particular. Post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free 
Terms and conditions apply. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at DoorDash. DoorDash is always my go-to when it comes to a meal delivery service. I don't care if I'm in New Orleans, if I'm in Mobile, if I'm in Indianapolis, at the Combine, no matter where I'm at, I'm using DoorDash. Uh, sometimes I'm in places where like I'm not familiar or maybe I'm like in a rental car or don't even have a rental car. And so I'm not able to go and drive around and stuff like that. And even if I did, I wouldn't want to because I don't really know the streets like that. And I'm trying to stay at home, trying to stay at the apartment, the Airbnb, whatever. And I just want my food to show up right at my doorstep. And that's what I love about DoorDash because DoorDash makes it happen. Everything from local eateries to chain restaurants that you can always rely on. They got everything that you're looking for over at DoorDash. So you got to go and check them out today, especially if you haven't before. So if you haven't before, I'm going to help you out and put you on game. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order over at DoorDash. All you got to do is download the DoorDash app, and enter the code LOCKED23, still 2-3 for right now, LOCKED23, subject to change, terms apply. All right, family. Now, it does not matter what offensive coordinator the New Orleans Saints choose, what offensive system they upgrade to. If they don't have the offensive lineman that can hold it down, they're going to have trouble no matter what in 2024. So investing in the offensive line has to be incredibly important for this New Orleans Saints team. Let's break down some of the candidates here in Mobile that should be standing out as a means for them to be able to get that done. Appreciate you, as always, for joining us here on another episode of Locked on Saints. Don't forget to go and check out that Locked on Sports Today 24-7 national sports media stream, the first of its kind over on YouTube. Make sure you go check it out today at Locked on Sports Today on YouTube. All right, so um, I want to take a look at three offensive linemen. Actually, I'm going to give you four. I'm going to do another honorable mention here. Um, so this will give us our fifth through eighth candidate or, or, or prospects that we're, we're discussing today. Uh, and I'm going to start off with a guy that we've talked about before uh, that I think if the Saints drafted in the first round, I'd be very happy with that. Uh, and that is uh, Talisa Fuaga. Talisa Fuaga, who has played uh, you know, a lot of snaps at you know, right tackle, uh, could move over to the other side. He's got good athleticism, all that. Weighed in here in Mobile at 6'5", 332 pounds. Like I said, he's a first-round talent for sure. Zero sacks allowed, uh, only 23 pressures throughout his career allowed, 25 games started. And here in Mobile, he has been... Uh, just dominant, just dominant. It doesn't matter who's been lining up in front of him. It doesn't matter who, you know, what the assignment is, if it's the run game, if it's the passing game, no matter what, he has just dominated the guy in front of him. Um, he is so quick. He's so athletic. He's so strong. He anchors super well. It's so hard to move him off of his spot. His hands are fast. He's very reactive. He just does a lot of stuff right. He is an incredibly polished player to Lisa Fuaga out of Oregon State. This dude is just really, really fun to watch. Like I'm really looking forward to getting back out there today just to see him again, just to watch him some more. I, I think he's been outstanding. Um, if he's the Saints first round pick at 14, power to them. I mean, this is just one of those dudes that if you draft him and put him at left tackle, you're getting better. If you draft him and you have him waiting behind Ryan Ramchek at right tackle, you're getting better. Like you're gonna be better with a pick like Fuaga. Now, he's not the only one. You don't even have to spend uh, a first round pick on an offensive tackle to get some of the really talented guys that are here in Mobile and some of the other talented guys that are going to be in the NFL draft. But man, if you wanted a surefire thing and you're not going to be able to get you know your hands on a Joe Alt or whatever um, in this year's draft, the Notre Dame tackle, who's like the top guy, you, you land a, a Talisa Fuaga, you're very, very happy about that. Absolutely no doubt about it. Another guy here in Mobile that I've been super excited about here recently and watching him over the course of the last couple of days, Penn State offensive tackle, uh, Kingsley um, just been awesome. And again, he's another one of those guys that like anchors really well, really heavy below the waist. He's just one of those dudes that like sits down and you can't move him off of his spot tree trunk kind of guy like just digs roots in the ground you're not able to move him off his spot six foot four 239 pounds he's probably like a second round guy maybe somebody that creeps into the first round could be a guy that falls down a little bit too just because of the amount of talent at tackle when teams see a lot of talent at one position sometimes you see a run on them early sometimes you don't see that run and you see them kind of stick around and wait and go okay we don't have to jump into that yet because these guys are going to last for a while and all that but uh, Suomataia is just one of those dudes that to me feels like 
a guy that can move to both sides. He's got that versatility. He has, he doesn't really play with like the meanest streak. So I'd like to see a little bit more of the mean streak out of him. You know what I mean? But man, there's a lot of really good things that he does. And he's been a lot of fun to watch uh, here in Mobile. No doubt about that. All right, let's take a look at another guy here. Uh, University of Houston, a guy that I've mocked to the Saints before in the second round, Patrick Paul. Uh, he weighed in here in Mobile at six foot seven, 333 pounds. He big uh four total sacks allowed throughout his career 49 pressures allowed 39 straight games started that's a lot of time playing a lot of experience and a lot of good work to show from it um, he's been another one of those dudes that you just watch him be dominant he's so much fun to watch in the run game too and even as somebody at, that's at six foot seven 333 pounds earlier on uh i think he was listed at like 315 or so so he's put on a little bit of weight but that weight has not slowed him down at all He's still very athletic, gets to the second level. He's one of those guys that's able to kind of crack back for you a little bit too. So if you're running to this opposite side and you want to pull him around or have him catch a blocker or you know he's working to get to the outside, maybe you're running to his side and he gets past that you know, offensive, that first uh, defensive line, and then he's moving up to a safety or a linebacker or whatever. He's got the athleticism to square up, get in position, do what he's got to do, but then the strength to be able to bulldoze through that guy and be able to keep paving the way for him. He had a fantastic block and a run uh, run rep earlier on uh, Wednesday's practice that I just, that just, you know, it, it, it caught my eye. Like my eye stayed there while the running back, you know, blasted free somewhere. My eye stayed on where the block was made and watching sort of like his aggression, him be that, you know, kind of being there, kind of went to flexing on him, you know, could put the old, the old Hulk Hogan pythons on him and everything like just fun. I mean, just a fun dude to watch and has been a lot of fun to watch uh, here in Mobile uh, as well. All right, let me give you one more honorable mention on this one. Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. He spent some time a little bit lining up opposite, uh, you know, over on the right tackle side, spent some time over on the left tackle side. He's moved around quite a bit. Six foot seven, 324 kind of a fringe first, second round guy. He could be a dude that I could absolutely see somebody grabbing at the end of the first round, get the fifth year option on him, continue to develop him, you know, keep him on that rookie contract, all that. Um, really, really talented, big body guy, very athletic, moves well, um, and has a lot of power behind him. Even though he's six foot seven, it doesn't seem that he plays too high. He doesn't get like, like beat by the underneath leverage. He can sink his hips. He can kind of square up with some of these dudes. I think the biggest thing for him that I'm going to be waiting for is just hand placement stuff and, and just more violent hands. He's a violent dude, but I want to see more violent hands out of him. And I think if we see that, that I'm like, okay, yeah, now I see why he would be maybe one of those first round guys. I, I would put really honestly, like all three of these guys, all four of these guys over like a JC Latham at this point. That might be because I'm watching these guys play football. JC Latham, I've only seen, you know, on tape and everything like that. But like a JC Latham, for instance, who's sitting at like 350, he just doesn't move as well as these guys. And so now that I'm like here and watching these guys move, whether it's um, uh, Suamatia or whether it's uh, Fuaga, whether it's Paul, whether it's Guyton, you can just see sort of the movement of these guys. And I think that like the zone run game and just knowing sort of these candidates that the Saints are looking at when it comes to the systems that they're coming from for you know, their potential offensive coordinator spot, the zone run's going to be pretty big, it looks like maybe for the Saints. So you want those guys that are going to be able to move, get lateral, uh, be able to get out in front, work their way up field, all that other stuff. So those are four offensive tackles that I've been paying attention to just as a quick refresher. Uh, Talisa Fuaga, the uh, offensive tackle out of Oregon State. Patrick Paul, the offensive tackle out of Houston. Uh, Kingsley Suama Taia, uh, that is the offensive tackle out of Penn State. And then Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Coming up next, Let's look to the other side of the football and get to the defensive line. I got a first rounder and two day two, potentially even day three picks. That would be well worth the investment for the New Orleans Saints in the 2024 NFL Draft. Got that coming up for you as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the easiest and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports, whether you're checking out their specials tab where you can actually combine different sports. So you're picking against projections, right? But don't just do one player in one game on those projections. Combine some folks. How about Travis Kelsey and LeBron James for a combined 10 and a half receptions and three pointers made? 
more or less. That's all you got to do. You just pick more or less. That's what it is. They even have some fun stuff and their special stuff where you can play against like rapper Meek Mill and all this other stuff as well. It's you and your knowledge of your favorite game, your favorite teams, your favorite players versus the house. Super easy to win. Do that for two to six players. Pick those projections. You go up to 25 times your money back if you get them right. Go and check it out today. Prizepicks.com says locked on NFL with promo code locked on NFL. You're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. It's the first deposit match up to $100 at prizepicks.com says locked on NFL. Promo code locked on NFL. And that will take you everything that you need over at Prize Picks Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. Let's get it, Huda Nation. If the New Orleans Saints want to find themselves an athletic edge rusher to help to uh, bring some youth to that defensive line, bring some more speed to that defensive line, well, they're going to be able to find what they're looking for just two hours away from home here in Mobile, Alabama, because my goodness, these edge rushers are popping off the field. Appreciate you very much for being here with us for another episode of Locked On Saints. Don't forget that we are your team every day. We're back here with some more of these candidates to keep an eye out on tomorrow. I'm going to give you who, uh, you know, taking a look a little bit more over at the offensive coordinator search as that continues, get you everything you need to know around all of that. Doesn't seem like that search is going to move very quickly. Still feels like that's going to be maybe a post Super Bowl situation, but but maybe just maybe there's a reason for that. So we're going to be breaking that down in tomorrow's episode. All right. So um, as we take a look at the defensive line here, I want to start off with a guy that we've, we've looked at before that we've talked about before here on the show and that we really like. Um, and this is the one and only first round defensive end that I'm going to be bringing to the table in today's episode. Uh, so the reason why I wanted to do that is because I know a lot of people get a little bit like annoyed at the idea that the Saints might spend a first round pick on an edge rusher. And I understand it. Like I get some of the concern around all that. Like Peyton Turner hasn't panned out just yet. The Saints went early for Isaiah Foskey, not a first round pick, but they used their second round pick there. I had mocked Isaiah Foskey to the Saints in the second round a bunch of times. I didn't think that that was a bad place to take him, but then he gets into the league and then deals with the same things that the Saints have been dealing with at the edge rusher spot with Peyton Turner, with uh, Marcus Davenport, and then now with Isaiah Foskey is just staying healthy and staying on the field. So I think the biggest thing that you're looking for now is can you find a guy that can stay on the field? And can you find a guy that like doesn't have lingering questions about his development, right? To where you don't have to, I think it was, um, I think it was Ryan Hinton over at, uh, over at the uh, Saints uh, Block Party uh, podcast where he talked about like, I don't want to have to squint to see how good you are. Like you should just be good. It should be, it should be uh, and that's 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 great analysis from Ryan because he's exactly right. Like you spend our first round pick on a cat. Like I don't want to spend a first round pick on somebody that like I'm not sure about. It's like my whole thing with the uh, with the quarterbacks. I don't want an underachieving or an overachieving quarterback. I want a quarterback that's got the NFL arm. I want the quarterback that's got the NFL size. I don't want a butt. I don't want a comma butt. I don't want oh he's not and he doesn't have NFL size but he doesn't have an NFL caliber arm but forget all that. I don't want that. I want the guy that's got the NFL size. I want the guy that's got the NFL caliber arm. Like, what are we doing here? And so I agree when it comes to whoever you're kind of spending maybe a first, maybe even a second round pick on, like I might even argue a third round pick. You should kind of have uh, more answers than questions, I guess. Uh, But certainly in the first round, you got to have more answers than questions. And one guy that gives you one big question mark, but boy, does he give you more answers than he gives you questions is UCLA defensive end. Leatu Latu. This dude, he has been so fun to watch here in Mobile. 24 sacks over the course of his career, 35 and a half tackles for a loss, a whopping 25.3 pass rush win rate for his career. It was an incredible 40% win rate in 2023. Faux zero, 40%. That boy won nearly half, nearly half of his pass rush reps in 2023. This dude is one of the most polished, defensive ends, polished pass rushers, edge rushers, whatever you want to call it, that I have seen at this level before getting into the NFL. And you watch him out here in Mobile and he's in a different class. Watching him lock horns with, you know, some of these other top tackles has been awesome. But when there's anybody that is just a smidgen below the talent that Leatu Latu brings, Leatu Latu exposes that deficit every single time and watching him rush, watching him in the one-on-ones, watching him, you know, do the bag drills, the traffic drills, stuff like that. He just moves with so much fluidity, so much confidence in himself. 
But are the medical records going to check out? This is a guy who was medically retired after a neck injury before he transferred to UCLA, got those doctors to say, all right, fam, you can get back out on the field, and then balled out. So big question mark, but I think you have more answers than questions. But I think the big thing is, is the, is the, is the accumulation of answers bigger than that than the single very big looming question? Six foot four, two sixty one, UCLA defensive and Leatu Latu, definitely a name to watch. Now, what about on the defensive interior? Now, the Saints invested on the defensive interior this offseason. They brought in Nathan Shepard. They brought in Colin Saunders. They drafted Brian Brzee. They you know brought back Malcolm Roach. Malcolm Roach had the NFL's top uh, run stop rate uh, according to Pro Football Focus before his injury. Will he be back in 2023, 2024? We're not sure. But if you want another one of these guys that's got hyper athleticism, but then good size. Look no further than McKinley Johnson out of um, out of Texas A&M. Uh, six foot one, 331 pounds. He's a dude that like is very, very much like what um, very, very much like what Colin Saunders is, right? Six Colin Saunders is what six foot, six foot one, two twenty, three twenty four or so. So you know, not kind of like these compact, uh, dense. Uh, you know, but r- remarkably athletic types of players. Uh, and I-, I think having another one of those young guys that can be that guy for you makes a ton of sense. Sorry, I said McKinley Johnson. It's actually McKinley Jackson, no relation. Um, but yeah, at six foot one, three thirty one. He's just a disruptive dude, and he's got some really good pass rush moves. Really active hands, violent, violent hands as well. Uh, just keeps fighting and fighting and fighting. Had a pass rush win rate of eight point seven, which is really good from on the interior. Uh, also had a, a, a run defense grade of seventy six point nine from Pro Football Focus. Had several uh, defensive stops in the run game and everything as well. I mean, just really, really solid stuff. And then put together four PFF sacks. I call them PFF sacks because they count they count half sacks as full sacks as well, which is a pretty good number and a pretty good day from. Uh, the the defensive interior. So really good stuff from uh, McKinley Jackson, somebody that I liked a lot watching out here in Mobile as well. And then finally to wrap us all up, somebody, another guy that we've not talked about before here on the show, um, Missouri gets a little bit more love, Darius Robinson, the six foot five, 286 pound pass rusher out of the SEC Mizzou, probably more like a third, fourth round day two kind of guy. Eight and a half sacks last year, 14 total tackles for a loss last year, and a pass rush win rate of 27.8%, one of the top 20 in the entire country amongst all uh, defensive ends or edge rushers in college that took at least 200 uh, pass rushing snaps. Really, really good player. And the thing about him that's so interesting is that he was actually much heavier at one point. Like he's at 286 now, which is great size. Looks great on his frame as well at six foot five, but he was actually heavier. They kind of tried to have him bulked up as a as a, a, a three tech on the interior. Then he kind of like chiseled up, didn't really drop weight, like dropped a little bit of weight, but then toned up, kind of chiseled up a little bit. And then they moved him out to a five tech. So he's a little bit more of a run stopper, uh, a little bit more of a run roll, but just watching him as a pass rusher, as you, you just heard 278 uh, pass rush win rate. That's over a quarter of his pass rushes that he's won uh, in 2023. I mean, just phenomenal athlete and a really, really good player. He's been a lot of fun to watch here too, uh, as well. So once again, that is UCLA defensive end, Leatu Latu, Texas A&M McKinley Jackson and the interior, no relation, and in Mizzou, Darius Robinson. So that's our 11 prospects today that I think should be on the New Orleans Saints radar. That's just at three positions of need. That's not even looking at like running back, quarterback, uh, corner if they decide to move off of Marshawn Lattimore, safety to allow them to be able to move off of Marcus May, and then linebacker where they could use more speed and youth as well, more talent over there. So we'll continue to look through some of these other positions all throughout the offseason. That's why we're here for you every single Monday through Friday here on Locked on Saints, because there's so much to talk about when it comes to this team. So I hope that you enjoyed that breakdown. We'll be back with more in tomorrow's episode. We appreciate you very much. Making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day for your second listen. Locked on Pelicans, Locked on LSU, keeping you up to date with everything you need to know. Locked on Louisiana, that's where it's at. And now, of course, I appreciate you very much for making Locked on Saints a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me on the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media, at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.